tonight. One, two, three. <laughs> we missed. <laughs> Struggling to turn your house into a no-fly zone? And down. Down, but not out. Some of them may lie there on their backs buzzing, and then eventually they'll stand up and they may well fly or walk away again. It's turning into a major bugbear for some. There's no one-shot kill, there's no fast kill, and in this case, there's no kill at all. Plus, the pitfalls of internet banking. That's the sort of mistake anyone can make. But we thought it would be easy fixed. How do you get your money back when you accidentally put it in the wrong account? The banks won't help you, the police won't help you. No one can investigate it. And immortal burgers. It's the burger that lasts forever just an urban myth. So if I bought four burgers from fast food joints plus a homemade burger, pop them in a camping pantry and left them, what would you expect to see over a passage of time? Its appearance will stay the same. Welcome to the first fair go of 2016. Finally, it's been a while and we are very pleased to be back. First up this year, flies. When you kill one, hundreds more seem to turn up for the funeral. Little bit of an exaggeration, but this summer has been a shocker. And if you're like me, you've probably been reaching for the fly spray to blow the pesky buggers away. But how effective is it really? Brody's met a bloke who insists household fly spray just doesn't work, and he reckons he can prove it. Now, a warning, if you're a frog or happen to like flies, then you might not want to watch. One, two, three. <laughs> we missed it. Ah, the joy of hunting flies. <laughs> There's just something about killing them. And, uh, we'll get back to this murderous rampage soon, but first, meet Paul. These guys were just smart as I mean, they'd sense you coming. These ones he caught all yeah. these flies. Yeah. Why, you might yeah. ask? Well, it started five years ago. My wife and I felt that uh, the flies just weren't dying if we sprayed them. So um, we'd uh, get uh, an adult housefly into a small room, uh, give it a blast, a <laughs> blast, and close the door, come back an hour later and see if it was dead or not. Alas, the flies weren't dying. We've just gone through all of these products, you know, from Raid to Black Flag to Mortine, and every one of them, same result. Now, the flies Paul is talking about are known as the common house fly. Come summer, these are the ones you will see all over your house, and they are so not cool. Right, just ask right, our super fly right, expert, yes. Dr Alan Heath, what they get up to. They do have this tendency to spread diseases. Um, they come and land on nasty stuff, uh, suck it up, and then go to our food, regurgitate what they've sucked up onto our food and then we eat it. Oh, see why people like Paul want to kill them? Anyway, despite wanting to kill them, Paul says his fly sprays just don't seem to work. So every summer for the past five years, he's gone to the manufacturers. They would say, well, it's obviously a dodgy batch. Take it back to the shop you've bought it from and they'll give you a replacement. Or in, in Raid's case, they'll take the batch number down and they'll say, look, we'll send you out a voucher and you can get a replacement. Fed up with the same response, Paul got creative and started carrying out some home tests. I sprayed the adult house fly, caught it in a container and just observed it from there to see what would happen. Um, but generally within about 20 to 120 minutes, these guys would be back up flying around. Here at Fair Go, we were like, what? Well. We've got to see this. So we released 15 house flies into Paul's living area. He's using Raid One Shot Flying Insect Killer and I'm using Black Flag Rapid Kill. Because it's black, so it looks mean and like a, a killing machine. We'll give them a good dose. <laughs> Missed. I didn't miss. Then try and catch them again and see what happens. <laughs> I think you got it. Gotcha. <laughs> Double banger. While we're doing that, let's go back to Dr Heath, who's studied flies for 50 years. He says house flies have been following humans around for thousands of years. That's why they're so widespread and successful, because they, they'll feed on a wide range of rotting materials. House flies, like grass clippings, household rubbish, cat and dog droppings, that sort of stuff. And because they've been around for so long, Dr Heath says it is possible some flies have developed a resistance to fly spray. Some of them are going to be less susceptible to the insecticides than the others. So the susceptible ones die, the less susceptible ones survive to produce offspring, and that sort of natural selection works over various generations. So the flies could have developed a knockdown resistance gene. It means it takes a bigger dose to knock those things down, and some of them may lie there on their backs buzzing and then eventually the enzymes within them that the gene is promoting 
will break the insecticide down and they'll stand up and they may well fly or walk away again. So, could that have been what happened with our mates at Paul's house? We managed to catch nine of our spray victims. As you can see, they weren't in great shape when they were caught, but an hour and a half later and... Here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven out of nine of these flies are alive and we hit them all and we were good. So, I'm, I'm very impressed with your test. Yes, seven out of the nine flies we caught were very much alive. He was dead on the kitchen. He sure was, and what about this guy? He's happy as Larry. Yeah, he's happy as Larry. And happy as Larry they were the next day. In fact, another fly came back from the brink, meaning eight of the nine flies survived our killing spree. RIP to this little fella, though. Now, Paul says he's tried and tried to alert Raid, Mortine and Black Flag of his findings, but he's sick of getting fobbed off. Enough's enough. Um, I'm not wandering around the house spraying flies three or four times, wasting my time and money, uh, even though it's not a lot, trying to fix a problem that they should have sorted out. He just wants them to at least look at his concerns and take them seriously. We think they should too. Other than the fact that these products are marketed and advertised as fast knockdown, one shot kill, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, but we've proven that that advertising is quite clearly misleading. There's no one-shot kill, and in this case, there's no kill at all. Fly spray that doesn't kill flies? Unbelievable. Now, scientists have a saying, without experimentation, there is no science, no science, no proof, no proof, no truth. Uh, we don't pretend to be scientists, but in the interest of fairness, we were keen to double-check Paul's test results. So we got Brodie to release 15 flies in the TVNZ boardroom and armed her with a can of Mortine Fast Knockdown to see if it could kill, as claimed, in one spray. And we chose Mortine because it was the only spray we didn't test at Paul's house. Free yourselves! <laughs> Well, for now, anyway. So my job today is to chase these little mates around, much like we did at Paul's house. Kills in one spray, they say. So... Sorry, fellas. <laughs> ah! I spend the next 20-odd minutes blasting these flies with a can of mortine. I will clean these windows. Given it's Ugh. the TVNZ boardroom. Surely they're in a bad state now. And I managed to catch 11 flies. Ah! See? He was playing tricks on us. He was playing dead. I leave them for an hour and a half, then go back and check on their dead or alive status. So nine of the 11 flies that we caught are still alive. And this guy's just, he's loving life. And quite a few of them are loving life. Unfortunately, two flies died after filming, but the remaining seven were good to go. Now, we find this quite remarkable and we're eager to see what the fly spray companies thought about all of this. Now, Record Benkiser, which owns Mortine and Black Flag, said they are unable to explain Fairgo's results and it doesn't reflect their experience with their products. They say the experimental conditions are quite different to those they'd normally utilise. And tests on flies are always variable. The type, age of flies, room size, amount of dose product, time of spray, usage instructions like shake before use are all key factors of a valid scientific study. Rickett Benkiser is aware of Paul Snell's complaint but says there is no trend of these types of complaints. They say there's no published data to demonstrate a resistance to fly spray and that its products are fit for purpose, safe for consumers, scientifically proven and approved by regulatory authorities globally. So, pretty full response, mm. but hey, we are struggling to believe we're the first to complain about fly spray not working as it should. Uh, and this is interesting, the Mortine and Black Flag people, wreck at Benkiser, admit they've done no testing on flies in New Zealand because there are no purpose-built facilities. We also heard from the American makers of RAID, SC Johnson, who said... SC Johnson uses scientifically sound testing methods that are widely accepted in the industry to ensure all our products meet our expectations and the standards of government regulatory agencies around the world. Consumers in New Zealand can continue to enjoy RAID products with confidence. Well, that's that then. Uh, so if you've complained about your fly spray not working, we want to hear from you. Mm.